All right, guys, I've been working on my prediction skills and I want to try something pretty cool here. All right, so we need a card selected. It really doesn't matter. Just remember that one. I won't look. We'll leave that in the middle of the deck. All right, we'll give that a shuffle. And if you were here, you could genuinely shuffle these cards. All right, true shuffle really doesn't matter here. All right, now I'm going to attempt um, to do my prediction, but I got to be honest, I'm still not perfect yet. So I will need a couple of tries, a couple of different predictions uh, to, to try to do this. All right. Let's see here. Maybe this. Ooh, maybe this. Hmm. Maybe, ooh, this? No, 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 this right here. All right, guys, I'm gonna go with these three. Your card, I think, is one of these three. All right, but we'll get back to that in a second. For now, I want you to cut wherever you want. Cut off a good chunk of cards, all right, somewhere. All right, anywhere you want, perfect, that's great. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think it would be pretty good if I got your card in three, right? I mean, I think it'd be decent. I mean, it's not one, but I'm still working on it, right? So anyway, let's see what you cut to. You cut a two, all right? So what I want you to do is take this pile and deal two cards, all right? One, two, all right? Flip this pile over, and what do we get? Four, all right? Now deal four cards then. One, two, three, and four. Now, before you flip this, you can shuffle it. Shuffle it as much as you want. Really mix these cards up so it doesn't matter. Whenever you want to stop, you stop and flip that pile over so it'll be a totally random card. Let's say you stop right here and you get another two. Perfect, so deal two cards. One, two. Now, we'll stop here for a second and we'll get back to my predictions here. Now, I wasn't sure at first. I was sort of drawn to like a lower number, maybe a middle number, and I, I kind of thought maybe you went for a five. But then I kind of had second thoughts, and I thought maybe you know maybe it was a red card. And then I kind of decided you know what I need to stick with my gut, and I went black back to a five. Now it might be pretty clear to you that maybe I did have a good idea of what your card is, right? I have three fives here, and one's missing. Now, you might be asking yourself, if you knew what my card was all along, why didn't you just use one of your predictions to pick it? Well, think about this. You cut wherever you want, dealt a random number of cards, dealt a random number of cards, and then shuffled, right? You shuffled to the two, but if you would've shuffled the six, the four, or the jack, there wouldn't be two cards here. So the reason I didn't pick your card as one of my predictions is because, well, you, did it for me. What is good guys, it is Reed and welcome back to another dope video. Today I have an awesome trick for you guys. This is one that is something very new to my repertoire. I read this trick in a book um, within the last few months by Danny D'Artiz, his Semi-Automatica collection. Amazing book, he is my favorite magician, him and uh, Madison are pretty much my one and two. I absolutely love uh, his style. He's got a really unique style and an amazing brain. He's taught me so many brand new principles that I had no idea even existed. Like he, he is one guy who fools me all the time. I pretty much bought all of his stuff, I love it. And this is from his book, Semi-Automatica 2. So like I said, this trick is very new to me, but after I saw it, I loved the concept, loved the idea, but I needed to take it and do something my, of my own with it. So I came up with a nice variation that I think takes it to the next level and makes it even stronger than what was written up in his book. So that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today. It's a very fun sort of uh, selection trick. The spectator ends up finding their own card. A lot of chaos, very Danny Dauerty's esque Let's get into the history of this trick a little bit. According to Danny, Juan Tamariz got this trick from an old Vernon book in the Vernon Chronicles. He showed it to Danny and actually fooled him over and over again with this very trick. And then, you know, Danny, uh, as he does, he has a very specific style. He doesn't like stack work. He, he's very chaos and you know, the magic's happening to him, he's not doing anything. So he adapted it to his style, has his own variation. So this trick is called The Three Piles, uh, written up in his book. I'm not sure if that was the original name, but that's the name he gave it and his variation. So his variation is great. Again, it was published in his Semi-Automatica collection, which I highly recommend you guys go check out. 
Uh, I think it's like six books. I have the entire collection, but all the books are great. There's a bunch of tricks in there and uh, super awesome. If you do pick it up, uh, another one of my favorites is his imaginary dice trick and his about Lorraine trick are two other great ones from that book. Anyway, this is three piles and this is my variation on three piles. So I hope you guys enjoy this. It is a great trick and let's get right into the breakdown. All right guys, so one of the reasons I love this trick so much is because it is regular deck shuffled anytime, anywhere, all right? Literally my favorite kind of tricks because I don't have to have anything set up and I can do it, do it with my deck of cards. And so this, like I said, it's a, a quite new trick to me. Probably six months ago, I read this trick, thought it was great, performed it how it was originally written up. And then within the last couple of months is when I came up with this variation. And re only recently I've been starting to perform it uh, quite a bit, almost all, always when I can, because it's just so awesome. And uh, it really plays really well and people really, uh, really enjoy this trick. So let's go over it. So the setup, is absolutely nothing. You can hand the deck out to shuffle right away, but we're gonna hand it out in a second after they pick their card, so I don't really think you need to, but you totally can, especially if you're opening with this, you might wanna have someone mix it. But we need to start by peeking a card that they have selected. My favorite way to get a peek is gonna be the convincing control peek. I'm gonna use Alex Pandrea's variation of the, I guess it's a DMB spread control. It's very similar to convincing control, so I just call his variation of the convincing control, but check out the convincing control video I've done so you can, uh, do this peak if you want to use it because I think it's great and the reason I love using the convincing control is because you know They never take the card out and I can kind of go like this So only they can see it and it feels very fair it feels like there's no way I could have seen it again They never took it out and they only see it for a split second So I take the uh, so the Queen of Clubs and I show them it here And then they see it and they see it go into the middle of the deck like that now as I square up I'm taking a quick peek because I've actually controlled the card to the bottom, right? The convincing control. So as I square up, I take a quick peek at the bottom card, cut the deck as I hand it out for a shuffle, and they shuffle up their cards. So now I know the identity of their card. There's a lot of different peaks. You can do what's called everybody's peek, uh, Kyosta Kimlap move, which I love. Some other peaks you could do any really bottom control, right? Control the card to the bottom and then peek it as you're squaring and then have them shuffle. But essentially you just need to gain a peek in any way that you can. I would recommend the convincing control peek. Uh, don't, again, don't be super obvious, just a slight glance as you go like this, and then you can cut the deck and have them shuffle just so the card's not on the bottom. Once you have a peek, then they can shuffle all they want, which is really great and it feels super, super fair. I suppose you could do a force with this if you prefer, uh, like you come through and do the spread force, so I already know it's a jack of diamonds, and then I just hand it out and they shuffle right away. Up to you, I just tend to do a peek with this. Um, either one works, as long as your force feels super fair, that's what's important. I just tend to do a peek with this one for no real rhyme or reason. A force would just work just as well and feel just as fair, at least the way I do it, because I do the convincing control, right? And I just kind of go like this, peek as they, as they, you know, shuffle it right away. Or I would do, come through and do the, the spread force, which is just like this, and I close it up and they shuffle it right away. So it's basically the same thing. Now, once you know the identity of their card and they shuffle, they're gonna hand you the deck back. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna explain that you're gonna take a couple of chances um, to guess their card, okay? And I like to ask them, how many chances should I get? And people will almost always say three, right? It's a low number, so it would still be kind of impressive, and people just always say three. So I almost always get three. When someone says three, great, because that's what we're gonna do. If they don't say three, then you say, eh, I'm gonna do three. Three feels like a good number. Like, it doesn't really matter. It's just a little moment that I like to, I like to ask, see how many chances I get. Uh, oftentimes you get people say one, you're like, well, I'm not that good, I need a few more. So you just, you say three, right? Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna flip the deck towards you and under the guise of doing your predictions, which you are gonna be doing, you're gonna look at the bottom card and instantly spread and take a look at the top card. So a two and a seven in our case. So we're gonna add those together to get nine. That's gonna be our magic number for this setup. And this setup is gonna happen while we're taking out our predictions. So what are our predictions gonna be? The predictions are gonna be the three cards of the same value that they did not pick. So let's say they chose the Jack of Hearts, that's the card I peaked. Our three predictions are gonna be the Jack of Clubs, Spades, and Diamonds. In terms of the top and bottom card, I would recommend if either one are a face card that you cut them. I don't really like to do this with a face card on the top or the bottom because one, it's kind of confusing. Is this 10, is it 11, you know, is it 12, 13? It's, it's not super clear, it doesn't have the number on it. 
And as you're gonna see, there's gonna be a lot of dealing. And if you're, if they're both face cards, especially, you might run out of cards and it's just not the greatest. There's ways around it. But if you have either one of them a face card, I just tend to cut the deck casually. And I do this as I'm explaining the prediction part, right? So instantly as I get the deck back, and I start to explain, you know, how many chances should I get? I'm gonna to try to make some predictions. If I see a face card, I'm instantly just cutting this. Once I don't see a face card here, I'm gonna thumb over the top card and just casually, like very casually, you know, just like this. And I can just get a quick glimpse at it. And if it's not a face card, it's good. And I'll just kind of relax. If it is a face card, again, I'll just cut and I'll just keep cutting. And you can see, you can get a lot of face cards, but it doesn't matter because we're just explaining. It looks like we're just messing around with the deck as we're explaining uh, what we're gonna do. It's just, it works better without face cards. So that's my little tip, especially if you're in a performance situation, you don't want anything going wrong. Not that it necessarily would, there's ways around it, it's just easier. Um, I suppose if there's not one on the bottom, uh, you could just spread through the deck and quickly cull a non-face card to the top of the deck. But that starts to get a little bit more, you know, you don't wanna feel like there's any suspicion. They just shuffled, so we really want this to just, you know, feel like we're not doing anything. So I just kind of go like this until I have two non-face cards. They have picked the Jack of Hearts, so my prediction are gonna be the Jack of Diamonds, Clubs, and Spades. My first step is to look at that bottom card and, that, and I spread and I look at the top card and I add them together, nine plus four, 13. Don't worry, that's the only math we're gonna have to do for this trick. So after I have that number, I'm starting to spread from the bottom of the deck and I'm looking for those jacks. So if I hit one of the jacks that's not theirs, of course, I'm gonna lay it down. We'll say that's one prediction. You're gonna keep going. Now, when we see their card, we're gonna cull it. Okay, because we're gonna need to move their card to a position that is one greater than the sum of the top and bottom cards. So in our case, it's 13. So we're gonna need to move their card to the 14th position, okay? It's very casual, you just, no, no pressure, you just call that card out and you just start spreading towards yourself, obviously, looking for the other jacks. That's another prediction. And you keep going. Now, if I hit this third jack, I'm not gonna pull it out yet because I still have to set their card in position. So I'll go past it and I'll come back to the top. And this is when I'll start visually counting cards. I like to go in pairs of three. So I'll go three, six, nine, 12, 13 is the two of clubs, okay? Two of clubs, I'll open my hands a little bit and I'll say, hmm, could be one of these. And that's when I'll slide their card into that 14th position, spread back to the other jack and say, and we'll go with that one as well, and I will close up. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this setup process. All you need to do is pull out the three cards that aren't theirs, but the three same value cards, and place their card in a position that is one more than the sum of the top and bottom cards. So 13, we're moving it to the 14th position. So that's the way I like to do it. Again, there's a lot of ways. What you wanna make sure is that you don't change the top card or the bottom card, obviously, because you know then you'd mess up the value. But again, there's, there's a ton of ways uh, I'll show you a, a different method that you could go with. You could go and identify their card sort of uh, right away, right? So I see, again, we always wanna get that number first so we have an idea, so 13. And then I'm just gonna go past all the jacks and look for their card instantly and call it out. The only problem is that you're going to kind of look like you're starting to do something. You know, you wanna take out a card pretty quickly. You don't wanna be searching through all of these forever and then, you know, set something up and then take out the cards. You wanna not make it look like you're setting anything up. So t I like to take one out almost right away. There's jack number one. Keep going, and then at this point, I have this jack called so I can do my counting now. Three, six, nine, 12, 13. And you can even just remember the 13th card uh, and come back to it later. Like if you haven't called the jack out yet, just remember three of spades. And now I can come out, um, take this jack out, uh, find their card. Now I call it and I know it just goes right on top of the three of spades and then take this jack out and we're done, right? So there's a ton of different ways you can go about this. Find what works for you. Again, my favorite is to just go through the first jack that I see. If it's theirs, I'll call it. If it's not theirs, I'll take it out. Second jack, take it out and then wait on that third jack do my counting, stick the card where it needs to go, and then go back and quickly grab out that third jack. The other thing you wanna be careful of is, let's say I have their card in that 14th position now, right? And let's say I need one more jack, okay? If that jack is between their card and the top of the deck, that means that this card, if I remove it, now their, their jack is not at 14 anymore, it's at 13, so I'm gonna to need to add an extra card. So if you notice that, instead of pulling that jack out right away, I would just cull a random card because you don't want to use the top or the bottom card 
because we can't, right? We don't want to mess that up. So I'll call a random card out, come to the jack, throw it out, and then I'll just slide that card right where I took that jack from. And now the card is still at one, two, three, four, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Now we're set up and the rest of the trick is virtually self-working, okay? At this point, uh, we need to force the bottom card. So what we're gonna do here is a cross-cut force. So all you do is you say, I want you to cut off a good chunk of cards. You want them to cut off more than half. It doesn't matter, but it will prevent you from running out of cards if they cut off a good chunk. So I always make them cut more than half. I'll say, cut off a good chunk of cards somewhere more than half. So they'll cut it. And then I'll just throw the deck on like that, okay? Just throw it on casually on top like that. You don't wanna bring attention, don't wanna say, you know, I marked the spot, just leave it. And then we'll kill a bit of attention or a little bit of time um, by drawing attention back to these cards. This is what I like to do. You can do anything to just kill a few seconds, a little bit of time misdirection, but I'll just say, would it be cool if I happen to get um, your card in one of these three predictions? Then I'll hear what they have to say. Uh, usually, actually, I'll give these to someone to hold on to, these predictions, as long as they don't peek or I'll put it under uh, the box or something. Now we come back to here, I'll say, let's see what card you cut to. The four, four of clubs. So that means I want you to deal four cards into a pile. So they're gonna take the deck. You let them do this. They do all the work and they deal four cards, whatever number that is, okay? And you say, all right, flip this pile over. They flip it over a nine. And now you say, all right, deal nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And now they get the pattern of what's happening. They're dealing a random number, flipping, and then we're dealing again. And this time you can say, instead of just flipping it, I'll let you shuffle this packet and then flip it whenever you want. So now whatever card's on the bottom is totally random. So they shuffle, you let them shuffle and they flip. Queen, so we have 12. One, and then again, they do all of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Put the rest of the deck aside and you say, all right, we'll stop here. And you take those predictions and here's what I like to say. I'll start with one of the jacks that is not the color of the jack they chose. So in this case, one of the black ones. So I'll say, originally, I thought you might've chosen a jack. So I did go with a jack, right? And you place that on top of the pile. And then you say, but then I wasn't sure. And I thought maybe it wasn't a black card. Maybe it was a red card. And you just throw this. I don't even like to always point out that this is another jack. I'll just kind of bring attention to it being a red card. But then I'll say, in the end, you know, I kind of circled back and thought maybe you did pick a black jack. And then I'll go into, at this point you can see I probably had a good idea of what your card was because there's one jack missing out of all of these cards. Now you're probably asking yourself, if I had three predictions and I already knew what your card was, why did I predict these three jacks? And I'll take a pause here. Uh, you guys wanna make sure you recap everything that happened here. That'll make this really strong. You wanna let them know they did all the dealing, they did everything, they shuffled. Um, so you say, think about this. You cut anywhere you want. Then you dealt a random number of cards. You shuffled, you dealt another random number of cards. And I love this subtlety, guys. If you pull this jack back, you can say, remember, you shuffled this deck. So you got a queen. If you hadn't have picked a queen, you could have picked any one of these cards there wouldn't be 12 cards here, but you just happened to pick a queen. And the reason that I didn't pick your jack as one of my predictions is because you did it for me. And then you invite them to flip over this deck and it is their jack and all four match. So that is the trick. Um, I wanna go over a few important moments now. Uh, I feel like this explanation was a little confusing for some reason. So I do wanna recap it and explain also how the, the actual force works because it's quite, quite deceptive. So again, we get a peak, right? Jack of spades, or we'll use the jack of hearts again. We get a peak and we hand the deck out to shuffle immediately. As we get the deck back, we're peaking the bottom card. And if it's a face card, we're cutting it. The second the bottom card's not a face card, we'll push over the top card to peek what it is. If it's a face card, we're cutting it. While we're doing this and making sure that we get to a point where there's no face card, we are telling our spectators that we're gonna attempt to predict their cards. How many chances do they think we should get to predict your card? If they say three, we'll take that. If they don't say three, then we'll say, all right, well, I'm gonna take three chances. We flip the deck over and the first thing we do is look at the bottom and top card, add them together, seven plus five is 12. We start spreading through the deck. All right, once we see their card, we're culling it out. We're doing this towards us. And if you're worried about them seeing the cull, you can just kind of uh, turn off to the side here. But again, you want to keep these cards towards you. And it doesn't like you could, this is a good angle because they don't really notice this culled card. And even if they do, like that doesn't look like anything suspicious, especially 
you have to think about this. You have the guise of doing a prediction. So you can do whatever you want, right? You have all the time in the world because you're making a prediction. So as you're doing this, you'd be like, hmm, you might have like, look at them in the eye a little bit. Be like, hmm, maybe, uh, you know, just sell it that you're making a prediction. So it doesn't feel like you're setting anything up. When you see a jack, you take it out. See a jack, take it out. Obviously don't take out the third jack until you're done the setup. So now I'm gonna visually count three, three, three. Uh, here's a jack here. So I'll count three. So that's 12. And you know, this needs to go one more than 12 because it was seven plus five is 12. So it needs to go 13. So I'll put that there. I know that there's gonna be a jack I'm gonna have to take out that's in between. So I'm gonna call one more random card, take out that jack and slip the random card in between. Now their card is, remember, five and seven make uh, 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And their card should be at 13. Okay, so now the setup is done. You're gonna tell them to cut wherever they want and make sure they cut a bit more than half. They cut off a big chunk. We just quickly execute the cross cut for us. Our time is direction. You say, would it be impressive if I uh, was able to guess one of your cards with one of those three? After they respond, we flip this bottom packet. So here's why this force works. So we're forcing the bottom card, which is seven. So they're gonna deal seven cards. The five is going down first, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. To a layman, this feels very fair but all we're doing is forcing the top card now. So now we've just forced the number 12, essentially. So now they're gonna deal five more. One, two, three, four, five. And if you think about it, we dealt seven cards from the top, now five cards from the top. So that means we dealt 12 and their card was at 13. So the next card here is gonna be theirs. Now they can shuffle this packet all they want because whatever card they pick, this card's going down first, right? Their card's going down first. So nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine put the rest of it away. And now when they flip, their card's on the bottom. So again, for this process, it's very simple. Let them do all of this because they can, right? There's, uh, it's, that's what makes this feel so fair. They did everything, they made all the choices, right? Now we stop here, pick up the three cards. You can use whatever pattern you like, but I like to say, at first I thought you picked the jack, but I wasn't sure. And I thought, no, it might be a red card. But then I ultimately circled back to a jack. As you can see here, I probably had a good idea of what your card was because um, there's one jack that's missing. But if I knew what your card was, why wouldn't I have just picked it in one of these predictions? And then you want to do a bit of recapping. You explain the points you want to hit are they shuffled, they cut wherever they want. I love to do this. Say, look, you picked nine. You could have picked any one of these cards because you shuffled. And if you hadn't picked nine, there wouldn't be nine cards here. And if you're wondering why I didn't pick your jack, it's because you did it for me. And they flip over the last packet and there is their card and the fourth jack. So that is the trick. That is my variation of three piles or the three piles. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Now let's get into some uh, uses and other ideas. One thing I wanna reiterate is you gotta be careful if you've put their card in position and another card that you need to take out, like another three or even two more threes are in between that and the top. If you take these out, you're gonna be moving their card two more closer to the top. So that's a problem. So to circumvent that, if you, if you took out two, you're just gonna call two cards as you're looking for the last three and just insert them anywhere um, before this three to put it back in the position it needs to be. So that's a quick workaround. Um, as you guys play with this, you'll figure it out yourself. It's really, really easy to do this because you're saying it's a prediction. So there's a million ways. I'm just telling you guys the ways that I set it up. I, you know, I'll take out one, take out two, call their card, uh, go through, do my count, place their card in position and pull out the last one, done. If I run into an issue where I need to take out a card that's in between their card, then I'll just call out a random one, take out the card I need to while I replace that card in the position of the card I took out. So now it's still in the same spot. Again, you wanna make sure they do cut more than half the deck there because here is what could happen, all right? And here's another reason for the face card. So let's use, a, um, you know, you definitely don't wanna have two of the same card, I don't think either on the top and the bottom because it just kind of kills the randomness uh, factor. But let's use a queen on the bottom and a 10 on top. So those are two high cards. And this is why I don't like to do it with face cards, right? Because they cut, even if they cut a, a good chunk of cards, right? More than half. Again, this the reason they cut more than half is it kind of helps prevent this problem, but it doesn't always solve it as you'll see. So they force the queen. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. They get the 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, this packet they shuffle. 
let's say they shuffle and happen to put, uh, let's go with a king on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh, they perfectly cut to 13. Okay, well that doesn't always happen. So let's say they cut a few less than 13. You can see you'll run out of cards before you deal the 13. Now, it doesn't matter because the force card will be on the bottom here, but for the effect, you want them to deal 13. So then what I would do is just cut off some more from the first packet and give them those and let them finish dealing. But it kind of sucks, right? You don't want to have to do that. So that's why one, I don't like to do it with face cards because you don't want to have to run out of cards like that. And again, the face cards, people can get confused at what their value is. If you did want to do it with face cards and you don't care, then you can just do that method. You just pick up a few more cards and hand it to them if they need. What I added to this is the whole idea of finding the card, okay? So originally, um, this was just a prediction trick where you would go through the deck, so say seven plus seven, 14. So you just count, see what the 14th card is, and then take out the other three, right? So if the 14th card's the king of spades, I would take out the other three kings and say, I'm gonna make a prediction. Now you go through a similar process. He did have one different uh, thing that I'll show you guys in a sec, but uh, you force the bottom card, they deal, flip, they deal, this one they can shuffle, flip, then you take your three predictions, lay them here, and it matches the card that they had there. I really like the idea of that card being a selected card and it being a prediction for their selected card. So that's a big addition to this. And I prefer to use the crosscut force to force that bottom card. Now the way he did it is really neat. I just don't like it for a few reasons, but it's super cool. So he'll have them cut their chunk of cards, start, and they'll hold on to that. He'll take his packet and he'll just say, all right, I want you to give these cards here a quick shuffle. Just give them a riffle together. So the person will riffle shuffle, and then he'll say, all right, flip it over and let's see what card you cut to. And it's a six, would you look at that? But it's not the same six, how does that work? So what you do is as you're telling them you want them to shuffle, you're spreading through and finding another card that matches, so another six, and you're just cutting the deck there. So now when they riffle shuffle, no matter which they put down first, it's gonna be a six, okay? And that's basically the force he would use. Now, I don't like it because one, I don't like picking up the deck and being like, all right, I'm gonna have you shuffle. And then if the six is like all the way at the top, then you have to kind of cut some cards on top of it. I didn't love it for that. And I did get in the position a few times where there was no six in this deck, no other six. And so that is why I got rid of that method. It is really neat, a really cool idea using that sort of shuffle force. It's kind of uh, deceptive because people think, oh, I shuffled, there's no way you can control it but it, obviously we're just controlling two cards because it's the bottom one but uh, that we flip. But I thought it was pretty cool and thought I'd throw it in there so you guys can get an idea of how it was originally done. But I think it works much better just as a simple cross cut force. And I'm sure there's a lot of other ways you guys can come up with to force the bottom card to start. Just make sure you don't disturb that top packet, of course. All right, guys, that is my three piles variation. I hope you guys love it. Big shout out to Danny Domartiz, Juan Tamariz, and Vernon. Um, this is a great trick, honestly. It, uh, people really get the sense of randomness and really love this effect uh, since I've been performing it. And I'm really loving uh, performing it. So I hope you guys can go out, perform this, uh, tell me what you think of this variation, see the reactions you get from it, because it really is quite good. And it's a, a quite fooling trick, to be honest. That it's, I mean, it's really just one big force but it's very deceptive, I think. And I'm sure you could use some of these principles in other routines as a force as well that could feel really fair. You could, you could probably build this in in some way. You could just use this simply as a prediction effect and a force, right, from a shuffle deck. You could have them shuffle, they're like, think about that. This is a good bonus idea. You do like this whole big prediction with an envelope where you have like, I have a giant card behind my curtain here, right? I have the, the giant jack of hearts. They can shuffle the deck, which is great. I take it back and I can say, I'm gonna make a prediction. I count the, the, the bottom and the top card, add them together and all I would do is call the Jack of Hearts into whatever position it needs to be. So nine plus seven is uh, 16. So I need to call it to the 17th position. I put it in the 17th position, go through this force. And at the end, they flip the Jack of Hearts and I have this great reveal. So you could use this as a whole force for whatever you want, right? Like just that concept from a shuffle deck and think about all the chaos and all the decisions they feel like they make. So it could be a cool force on its own. Just an idea to throw it out there. But anyway, hope you guys got a lot of this video. Let me know what you think. Did you like it? Are you gonna perform it? Let me know. Drop me a comment, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.